Okay, good morning. How's everybody doing? Let me just do a quick refresher to make sure the video is showing up for you guys. Excellent. There we go. And turn the volume off. All right, so this is Paint with Lovejoy. We are doing a tequila sunrise cocktail painting today. Your choice if you are of age and drinking tequila while you paint this. Totally your call. Um, so a little bit of what you're looking at here. Uh, we've got our colors for today and you are more than welcome to switch out any of your colors. And then I'm working on an eight by 10 panel. Um, some of you may be working on a stretch canvas where it's a little bit wider, a little more depth here. So if you're on a stretch canvas, when we bring our background to the edge of the canvas, I recommend that you just carry that over the side. And I'll mention that again when we're painting. And then we have our cocktail, our line drawing on our canvas. So you've got two options for this to get this on your canvas. You can pause the video, draw what you see, and then pick up the video for the painting portion. Or there's a link in the description box below uh, to a traceable. And you can purchase, download the traceable, print it out, and then with carbon paper, you transfer this image onto your surface. And when you transfer it using the carbon paper, it's gonna be a really light line, but it will help you as you go through the video. For here on the video, I outlined mine in a Sharpie marker for those of you at home that are gonna pause the video and draw what you see. So either option, um, whichever one you wanna go for, stick with that as you move forward with your uh, creativity and painting. So, for today's painting, for our tequila sunrise, we're actually gonna paint the orange first because I want that to dry. Then we're gonna paint the interior of our cocktail and we'll do a little bit of a green uh, uh, reddish sunset. And then I did pick teal for the background, but you again are more than welcome to switch out with any color that you want. And then we'll kind of do our little condiments and then we'll come in and kind of add the glass. So just kind of, so you know which direction we're going today. And if you have any questions as we go along, please feel free to leave a comment in the chat and I will um, address them as I paint. And just want a quick shout out to everybody. Hi, Mike. Thank you guys so much for jumping on and um, hanging out with us and painting. So, all right. So we're going to start with kind of a light lemony yellow color. So I'm pulling a little bit of that white aside, a little bit of yellow about a one to one ratio, but basically just kind of going for a light lemony yellow color. And we're gonna use this, we're gonna fill in the entire um, orange slice right here. I am on a small um, uh, medium flat brush. You can use a small pointy brush if this is a little bit too much for you. And we are starting in a smaller space. Normally I start with the background, but given that this is a 30, generally 30 to 40 minute demo, I need certain things to dry so I can place um, paint on top of it. So that is why we are starting with our orange slice first. And we're gonna be working with our wet on wet blending today. All right, I'm actually just going right over my uh, black outlines from the Sharpie marker from the traceable. I'll make sure it goes a little bit thicker on there. Okay, so I'm gonna hold this brush aside because I'm actually going to use that color later on. Now I'm going to grab the small pointy brush and this is an orange slice. If you want to make it more of a lemon slice, um, you can stick with more yellows, but we'll be introducing some orange for our orange. So I actually like to grab a little bit of the orange, put it on the side. Basically we're mixing it with that same little color combo of white and the yellow. And this gets us to kind of a pastel-y orange. We're going to put this on the perimeter. And you're going to notice that it does mix a little bit with the uh, light lemony yellow underneath. That's okay. You are going to notice that it blends together and the color uh, shifts just a touch. It's a fun process and I'm just using light pressure where the orange and the yellow kind of meet and that softens the transition. So I'm going to grab this direct orange. Uh, we're going to go just a little bit more intense and just kind of with light pressure making little dash marks on the perimeter and you can see that I'm being pretty generous with that orange. Then we're going to wipe off that brush so I'm going to basically just kind of push and smush that darker orange into the lighter orange and even into the yellow. So if you're finding that you're kind of shaky at this point that means you're holding your breath 
So as your brush touches the canvas, I want you to just exhale. Makes it a little bit easier. So we are kind of keeping for a bit more of the yellowish center and then more orange on the side. And if your orange starts to creep halfway through, that's okay. You just, that's part of your orange slice for today. And you can just kind of soften that. You do want to do this while it's wet. And we are going to build on this concept as we do the interior of our drink. And then we'll also do wet on wet blending as we get to the background. All right, so I see a few questions on here. Um, Cheryl is asking if I have classes every day and what time they start. Um, so yes, I do. At the moment, I have classes every day. I started doing the daily demos um, kind of when the whole coronavirus started. It was my thing to give to the public and go, hey, you're stuck at home. Let's paint. Um, so currently, they are every day at uh, 11 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. So wherever you might be living, you might have to adjust your um, uh, your alarm to be able to check, catch it. Um, once I probably get more into working and society kind of levels off again, um, and I get more contract work, I might bump this down to maybe three to five days a week, but I'll put the schedule on my YouTube channel. Um, so you can go and see all the old replays that I've done. Um, or the, the live demos. And check out my online school, Paint with Lovejoy. I've got some more in-depth classes as well as quite a few of um, the YouTube videos. All right, so we're actually gonna go back to that uh, white and yellow mixture, and I had enough of it mixed from prior, so I'm gonna use that. But if you have to mix your color again, uh, we're going about equal parts yellow and white. So we're going to start here, and we're not going to quite, um, we do have a little bit of a perimeter, so we're going to start on the second line, not the top glass line. And I'm back up on that middle flat brush, or small flat brush, and we're going to pull this about halfway through, and then we're going to come in with yellow, and we're basically just going to get darker as we get towards the bottom of the glass. And again, mines, just because I want to cover them up. Uh, on some of the demos, you may have seen uh, the pop art where we do the black outlines. It's always an option that you can do for your paintings if you want. All right, so we've got that kind of base in there. Now I'm gonna grab some of that direct yellow and we're basically just building on the skills that we were doing for that lemon or for the orange. So taking that direct yellow, not quite all the way at the beginning or at the top, I'm gonna slap that yellow in there and just start pulling it down and then we're going to do the success paint and where the lighter yellow and the darker yellow meet you can use that light pressure and just kind of soften them we're going to do the same thing as we move into the orange and because this is uh we literally just applied it 30 seconds ago it's pretty thick on way so we placed our yellow the direct yellow about here we're going a little further down so about a third of the way down from the cup uh, from the top of the glass slap that yellow on there and then again, just so you can see how it all mixes, wipe that brush off. And then using that light pressure, smush that yellow or that orange into um, the yellow. And again, notice how quickly that diffuses, comes closer to that sh uh, pastel sherbet color that we were using, even though we put that direct intense orange on here. So that's kind of the concept of wet on wet blending. And the more that you do it, the more that your brain starts recognizing what it is um, and adjusting and getting more comfortable with it. So I'm basically going to repeat that process because I do need it to go a little bit darker. And on a lot of the other demos and paintings on my YouTube channel, we talk about wet on wet blending quite a bit. So getting comfortable with this um, just kind of aids in your creative expression. And literally just going to keep going down and then we'll move into some red orange and if your paint i'm using student grade paint because my channel is geared towards beginner and first time painters so i want to use the tools that i recommend that you use but student grade paint is a bit on the transparent side so to apply it thicker I place it on there and then as you've noticed i'm kind of holding my brush at about a 45 degree angle um, and then that way, it's allowing the paint to stay on there a little bit thicker. It's also keeping my brush strokes a little bit more smooth. If I was holding my brush perpendicular to the canvas, um, those bristles are hitting the, the actual canvas and my brush strokes are showing up more. 
in some paintings that works really nicely and we call them expressive brush strokes. But if you're going for something a bit smoother or you've got transparent paint kind of coming at this 45 degree angle um, will make your blending a little bit easier. If you're inclined to finger paint and do a little bit of blending here, go right ahead and give it a try. There is something nice and tactile about finger painting. All right, so now we're gonna add some red and this red's pretty powerful. So I'm gonna make the color first by adding um, probably two parts orange to one part red. And then same thing, we're gonna go right on top of that orange, it's gonna diffuse a little bit. I'm gonna pull it down closer to the bottom of the, of the uh, cocktail glass. And then now we're gonna grab that direct red Pretty powerful, a little bit goes a long way. And then I've got quite a bit of excess paint on there. Let's wipe that off. And then again, with that light pressure, you can kind of blend this red into the orange and just play with it. If you need to go back up and smooth anything out here, make sure you clean your brush really good because you don't wanna bring some of this red up into the yellow. It's gonna be so much more difficult, so. Um, just kind of play with your darker colors first and then clean your brush really good and then go in and play with the lighter colors as needed. All right, so I'm actually gonna add just a bit more paint right here so it's a little bit thicker. And that was our yellow and orange and white mixture. And it is gonna be a slightly different color than what I have on here, but I can still do some of the blending. And then now I'm gonna grab some of that orange just to make it a little more intense. There we go. So the more that you blend and get kind of comfortable with this process, um, the more fun you kind of have with painting. So try to find outlets on a regular basis for yourself because these are skills that can really only get better with practice. And again, I'm just gonna go into some yellow just to demonstrate much you have to clean your brush if you're going back into your lighter colors. So just grabbing a little bit more of that yellow, I'm going to blend it in with the orange just a touch. And you'll again notice if you get kind of carried away that orange is going to creep up to the yellow. Okay, sorry about that. I have no idea how we lost the video. I don't know how long I was talking. There we go. Sorry about that. Let me see if I can rewind and see where it left off. That one I have absolutely no idea why it was interrupted. Weird. Okay, so again, I apologize for the issue. I'm not quite sure where it cut off, how long I was painting and talking, and it's not allowing me to go back and see part of that feed. So hopefully I can continue and just keep on painting and you guys can pick up wherever it left. And if somebody is on the chat can let me know that it's showing up on your end, that would be awesome. Okay. Nope, it's not showing through. There we go. All right, little delete effect. Okay, I had about two days of no technical issues. Again, I apologize as we move in more and more into this technical world. Okay, thank you. Cool, and I'm seeing you guys jump on. Everything's good on your end. Um, quick question. Were you guys able to watch all of that blending or did it cut out prior to me finishing the interior of the cocktail glass? Okay, um, so let's jump into the background. Hopefully we won't have any other issues. I have, yeah. So we're gonna make a light teal for the background. All right, so again, you can change the color if you want something different to match the decor of your house. Um, it is expressive and as fun and creative with your background as you would like. So as you're applying your background, you generally have um, uh, 
bigger brush sometimes that you can use. I'm going to stick with what I have, but try a few different brush strokes since we worked in smaller spaces to begin with. So you've got a full width of a brush stroke, turn that sideways, a little bit skinnier. And then the favorite part is just back and forth, take out your stress and paint on the canvas um, and have fun. Okay. Awesome. Thank you guys so much for jumping back on and uh, let me know that everything's working out on your end. So appreciate it. Oh, cool. I can kind of see how the brush strokes look like ice in there. That's awesome. Uh, feel free if you want to add little ice cubes in yours. Um, we're letting this dry and then we will be coming back on top of that uh, with our glass designs and a little bit of gray kind of coming into here. All right. And just constantly checking just to make sure the video doesn't cut out again. All right, so basically we're filling in our background space with this medium teal color. And then just like we did with the orange and in the inside of our cocktail, we're gonna add some other colors on top of this while the paint is wet. So again, if you're on student grade paint, apply your paint kind of thick so that way we can do uh, the wet on wet blending. And if you are on a stretched canvas, carry that color around the side um, it just looks really nice when it hangs on the wall, having that color wrap around the edge. And again, just slapping that on there, taking out some of the technical frustrations on my background. And if you have to mix your color a exact same shade, because when we do some of that wet on wet blending, we're going to change the shade of the background anyway. And if you need to move into one of the smaller brushes, <clears throat> excuse me, one of the pointy brushes to get into little nooks and crannies, feel free to switch brushes. Um, I have the tendency to just kind of stick with one brush. And as much as I state that every video, that still hasn't changed. <laughs> I still stick with that one brush. Oops, let's grab a little more teal. Keep making sure that the video is still going through. All right. And one of my favorite color combos is the orange and the teal, which is why I chose this for the background. It makes me feel like summer it pops really nicely and just makes me happy. So as you paint more and more, you will find your color combos that you are drawn to a little bit more than others. So start to notice why you are drawn to those specific colors. There's no right or wrong answer for why you like certain colors over others. It's just more finding about your own um, psychology, the way you work, what's important to you. And that's a big aspect of art. Art is a very personal experience. All right, so we're getting this space filled in. We're going to start slapping some darker colors on here and a few lighter ones. So again, wet on wet blending method, same thing that we did in the center of our drink and that orange. I'm gonna grab an abundance of that dark direct teal. We're gonna slap it in a few areas. And then still I like to wipe off that brush. And then again, just move your brush back and forth. Play with this. Feel how fun it is just to move this paint and see the different colors it makes. Move your brush in different directions. Maybe we're a little more expressive with our brush strokes with this. Have fun. As we're looking at colors, I generally like to have a darkening, some depth. And I'm gonna make that a little bit more intense. And even though I'm using student grade paint, because it's student grade paint, it will diffuse um, as it dries and flatten a little bit. All right. So basically just clean that brush off a little bit so I can grab some of that white, doing that reverse wet on wet blending with the lighter color compared to the darker at the bottom. 
And uh, you'll notice that as we add the light color, it diffuses a lot quicker compared to the darker color. So you'll generally, when you're doing the wet on wet blending, you need a more of an abundance of your lighter color compared to just a small amount of pigment of your darker color um, to mix and blend and change. And the more that you paint, the more natural that concept will become um, and you'll be able to adjust and adapt based on your painting. All right, so have fun, get expressive with the background. Again, get everything to the way you kind of like it, the movement um, before we move into uh, the glass and our last few details. I was just looking to check. I think I want to go just a bit darker right here. So this will just kind of prove the point that a little bit of black pigment, tiny amount, right underneath the cup, a little bit more. Wipe off that excess and notice just how much a little bit of that black is going to diffuse into our other color. It makes it kind of a grayish teal. And I want to go just a bit darker. This one I'm not going to move as much. I want it to stay a bit more black. And then wipe that brush off and then just diffuse it light, light pressure. The holding the pressure, um, the brush gets more and more comfortable with each painting you do. Okay, so now we're actually going to move into, let's get, we got a red straw and a little red cherry here. Then we'll move into getting the detail, final details of our orange and with our glass as our last step. All right, and I see a few more people jumping on. Thanks, Annette and Gwen. Glad you guys could make it. All right, so taking that pointy brush, I'm going to make the straw and the cherry the same color. Again, keeping with those warm colors, you can adjust your color as needed. And I am going to go right past that the rim of the cup, just going right over it. When we do our glass, um, we'll put a highlight over it and it'll make the um, straw and the cherry look like it's behind the glass. So in the meantime, I'm painting right over that line. And because my uh, student grade paint is transparent, I can still see my black Sharpie marker through it. If you did not add your black Sharpie marker, which I generally don't recommend that you do at home, um, we'll just go right over it and you've got the line on the other either side if you can't see your black line. Okay. All right, so our orange is pretty dry, and let me put some more white on my plate. A couple of details. This is going to be light pressure. We're going to be using the pointy brush quite a bit. So if you can treat your brush kind of like a pencil, possibly even holding it perpendicular, but using just the tip of the brush. So as we're doing some of these small lines, find your pivot point. You know, you might need to put your pinky out, put that on a dry spot, and you can use that as your pivot point, or rest your forearm against the edge of the table. Because especially when we get to our highlight here for the glass, um, I want you to kind of keep a small to a medium width line as we do this. Um, so as we work on the orange, practice how you're going to hold your brush. All right, we're actually just going to start with that white. I'm going to put a dot right where that center is. And then right on the inside of that orange, this is going to be the kind of the white for the rind. And again, you're getting your good practice with your brush control. And because my paint is transparent, just about every brush stroke, I am grabbing more paint. So I'm applying it a little bit thicker, so it's a little more opaque. Again, adjust for what you need for your paint and your supplies that you have at home. So we've kind of got the, the outside rim and then this dot in the center, and then we're going to start from the dot and make these lines. These would be kind of like the slices inside the orange. Remember to breathe. I'm proud of you for painting at home. You're doing great.
and make it a little bit thicker right over here. All right, and while we're working on our brush pressure, we're gonna do one more, the outside perimeter with the orange. So clean that brush really good. Do the outside the skin of the orange. So because my paint's transparent by doing this orange one more time, it's making it a little bit more opaque. All right, and clean that brush. We're gonna put a little highlight on our cherry and our straw, and then we're gonna make our glass um, a light gray for the bottom of our glass. Okay, so we're just kind of getting a hint in there, wipe that brush off, grab a little bit more uh, white paint. And then for our cherry, if you think about um, it being a clock at about, let's see, let's start at nine o'clock and give it a curve to 12. So just a little line like that. Now wipe that brush off. And I'm, all I'm gonna do is just kind of push my brush there, a little bit of pressure and pull it down. Don't think about it too much, just do it. Um, same thing on that cherry. I'm just gonna place my brush, a little bit of pressure, squish that white into the red. We'll turn a little bit pink. Okay, so for our glass, we're gonna make a shade of light gray and at home, I fully recommend that you let all this dry. Some of my background's still wet, just a touch of the bottom here, still wet my cup. Um, but since you have time at home, let this fully dry and then pick up the video for that last part. I don't have the luxury of waiting, so we're gonna go right in. Um, if you jump right in like I'm going to with wet paint, if you happen to get some of your teal into the shades of gray or your other colors, take a paper towel wipe it off and then reapply that color. So to make our light gray, um, we've got our, our extra little blob of white right here. Black is a very powerful color to mix in there. So I like to kind of push it on the side, leave what's on my brush, start mixing, and then I can decide if I need to add a little bit more or a little bit less. Um, you, you do want to go for kind of a shade, a light, light to light medium. I'm going to go just a touch darker in mine so it shows up for you guys at home a little bit easing right here. All right, so we're going to fill in that whole base of our cocktail glass. And again, my background is still very wet, so just focus on your brush control if yours is wet at home as you come up next to that bottom color. And then we're also going to fill it in up here. And this one, I'm not going to go fully over and cover that red underneath, but that line, and we can see it right underneath the orange, we're just going to go straight across, um, and we're going to overlap that cherry and overlap the straw, but we're leaving a little bit of this space under here. So again, light pressure. Don't think about it too much, and my paint's still pretty wet, so I'm going to put that on there a little bit thicker. down the side of the glass. And it is optional if you don't want the side of your glass outlined, if you kind of like what it looks like, skip this step. And I still had some wet paint, so if you realize you get that wet paint on your brush, just wipe it off and then grab your color again. And other side, I don't believe it's showing up all that amazing for you guys at home. Sorry about that as I look at the video. And I'm going right over wet paint. So after this dries, I might just reapply uh, that color. All right, so now we're gonna go a little bit lighter gray. So I like to actually just take a clump of the, of the white and do what we call perimeter mixing. So I put the white kind of next to the shade of gray and then I can pull some of that gray in there. And this is an easy way to kind of step down a few shades from what you were just using. 
So we're going to use this color and I'm going to fill it in this area right here. I'm not going to quite go over the cherry because I actually like that it, you can see through it a little bit. Alright, and then using this light color we're going to go over this bottom line, kind of from where our cocktail ends inside the glass. All right, ooh, and we'll do that next. Okay, so now taking just pure white, we're gonna go along the bottom and it's just to be like a little smiley face kind of hugging the bottom of that glass. All right, and then we've got a little bit of a highlight in the middle of the glass. And as you uh, go to a bar or a restaurant next time, you can look at the glasses when they serve you a cocktail and start noticing the different shades of light gray that might happen um, on the handle of your glass or just different areas and just start noticing the different shades. How many shades of light gray and dark gray can you notice? All right, so in our glass, there is usually a nice highlight going down the whole glass. So. We're going to start right here and I'm going to start kind of right at, uh, let's go a little to the right of that straw. And I want you to just put a little blob right there. Then we're going to, and, that's, and, and a, a good amount of paint on there. Then we're going to start there and just kind of pull our brush all the way down. So I'm going to try to do it so you guys can see while I'm doing it. Might be easier to do here and allow gravity to pull um, or sideways. Your call. And then I usually like to add what we call a residual highlight. And these are a little more effective um, when you look at them from a distance. So if you're just looking at it going, I just got a strip of white on my glass, it looks weird. Get out of your chair, look at it from that distance and see how you're kind of observing it. Um, is it making sense? Does it look like kind of the reflection on a glass? Do you need to go back and um, put more white on there a little more bold? So right over that cherry and the straw, that top line, I'm going back with the white. There's a little bit of the gray there. And then I'm going to go on the left hand side of the glass, kind of slightly right on top of that light gray line we did earlier. Bottom of the glass. And then we're going to make one shade darker gray for our last little um, uh, shading on the glass. So you can start again with that dark gray, the first set of gray that we were using, add a little bit more of that black, and basically go in three shades darker than that first color that you were using. And then we'll make these weird kind of uh, almost like squished out parentheses or a C shape and then a backward C shape. And I'm going to make mine just a little bit darker, just so you guys can see the shape at home a little bit easier. So it's kind of the C shape that hugs that highlight in the center of that bottom of the cup on both sides. And let's see, let's take that same color, that darker gray, on the right hand side of the cup. Just in a few little areas, kind of the top and the bottom, just gives us a bit more contrast. And if you want to go in and do uh, color and do the little veins on the inside of your orange, you're more than welcome to do that. And oh, we need a little stem for that cherry, so a little bit of white, uh, a little bit of black. And again, you can reference the traceable. And if you wanted to, you could outline that cherry again. You could outline the straw with black. You could kind of make it any direction, anything that you want. Um, but it is Taco Tuesday today. Hopefully you're having some tequila at some point today if you're of age.
If you're not of age, wait till you're of age and be safe and responsible. All right, so it looked pretty good. Um, thank you guys again so much for hanging out, asking the questions, having fun with the process. Um, yeah, it's been great. So if you have anything that you want me to paint in the future, just leave a comment. I've got a new list going on the main uh, page of my YouTube channel. You can see all the future demos as well as all the past demos, and there's quite a few of them. Um, I think we're in the close to 80 now for the daily demos. Um, so check them out, keep painting. Um, if you want to dive more into the value scale and some more deeper skills, check out my online school, Paint with Lovejoy, and check out the Paint Pet class, as well as my intro to knife scraping. Um, very, very stress relieving and therapeutic for that. Um, please share your creations with people, uh, email them to me, paintwithlovejoy at gmail.com. Uh, but keep being creative and sharing the channel. It's through you guys that this has grown and continues to grow. So I hope you guys have a great day. Um, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and I will catch you guys all tomorrow. Cheers.